Um, moving on to, to the next player, the second player in your in your list, Lee, um, you've gone with uh, a player from Valorenga in Norway. Um, so we're, we're switching from the Alsvenskan to, to the Elite Serie in, in Norway. Who is, who, who is it that you've gone with there? Have you left it for me there, Joe, to, to pronounce his name? I know that you don't want to have a Yes, I it. have. <laughs> yes, I have. Okay, uh, we, we've gone for a 21-year-old right back, currently playing for Valerenga in the Litasarin in Norway. His name is Christian Borchgrevnik. Quite a mouthful there. Um, he's somebody who I really noticed last season. Um, obviously, we, we touched upon the fact that the Norwegian league season hasn't got underway yet. So I'm, I'm basing a lot of this on what I saw of him last term, what I've seen of him since, really, when I've kind of been keeping track of him. Um I think that he is a fullback. Valerenga in the first instance, I mean, we could have chosen three or four players from Valerenga alone to talk about on this podcast for young players with significant potential. Um, there are fantastic attacking players there. They've, they've got midfielders who are metronomes who can pass the ball. But I really like what Birch Grevnik brings to them from a, a profile point of view. And a lot of what we talk about when when you're scouting players, when you're doing it as a consultancy or for a club, it's really important that you start to think about how different player profiles kind of build up to to join together to make an overall squad, if you like. So you want to have as many complementary profiles in the squad as you can. So if you've got a, a a winger on one side, for example, who you know likes to drift inside, as we've just talked about, Benny Traore, then you want to have a fullback on that side who can either make the run to provide the width or is a really good progressive passer who'll be able to find Traore as he moves into those areas. And that is something that Birch Grevic really, really has as a strength. He is a fantastic ball progressor from that position, as well as um, being capable defensively. He's not somebody who, he's not a fullback who you expect, and I would expect to see absolutely powering along the outside and going round the winger. He's not somebody who hits the byline very often. He does occasionally situationally, but he is more comfortable in slightly more withdrawn positions. I think if I was going to draw a parallel, think about the kind of areas that Trent Alexander-Arnold likes to pick up the ball in, in terms of supporting and being able to give you that angled, deep cross that, that he likes to play. Birch Grevnik likes to play in similar areas to that, so he likes to be the supporting player behind the ball, who's always available to give an outlet. But last season, his metrics were extremely strong. He averaged 51.19 passes per 90, which is extremely high for a right back. Even for a team like Valerenga, who you expect to be attacking a lot of the time, he was quite often the outlet in terms of progressing the ball out from the back. And since he's only 21 years old, you already start to see that that's a player who his teammates and his coaches trust to take it to take the responsibility for that. So those pa- that passing volume is, is then combined with 6.59 passes to the final third per 90 so again he's willing to play the line breaking pass he's willing to take responsibility to be the one who plays the ball in the final third and creates opportunities for his teammates to play from a more advanced platform and finally you have his progressive passes per 90 which is slightly different progressive passes just mean that from where he picks the ball up he's playing a pass over a certain distance it progresses the ball forward so not necessarily in the final third but still forward in dangerous areas and he was averaging 10.1 progressive passes per 90 last year. So again, you start to, when you look at these metrics, and you pull them together, and I'm, I'm reading these off of a profile that we use at Total Football Analysis when we we write reports or we, we look at players, we pull everything together into one easy profile picture that shows you all the key metrics as well as positioning. And you really start to build a picture of what this player is as a right back. He's somebody who I don't expect to be in Norwegian football for much longer. I know there's already been interest from um, Germany and Italy in the player, and I would expect that to become more concrete. And I think when you think about this, we think about the fact he's likely to leave. He's likely to leave for me this coming summer transfer window. And that's when the different league seasons in Sweden and Norway, when they play from, from now through summer, that that's when it becomes difficult because players similar to South American leagues, clubs can lose important players halfway through the season. That's something I think that Valerenga will have to be very, very aware of because Birch Grevnik, I think, has the potential to play at a much higher level and to do so very, very well. 
I can't claim that that I've seen any of 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 Bojrevnik, um over the the past few days, but since you gave me uh, your list, Lee. But one thing that I can say is that sort of from his from his stats on transfer mark, you know, it, it, he seems to be, uh, I mean, absolutely first choice. You know, he missed just the one game last season um, as Volarenga finished third, uh, and that was due to a yellow card suspension. Um, you know, he over the course of what was a very very condensed. Um, elite Serian season, which started in the Ju- mid June and then ended in mid December, um, he played every game. Um, so, I mean, that's we we always come back to the fact that the the availability factor on this podcast, you know, always being there, always being able to showcase yourself yeah. is very important, especially if you're playing in a league which isn't one of Europe's biggest, um, but at least gives you a good platform. Uh, and cl- you know, clearly, he was playing in a very good team, playing with some very good teammates. Obviously, you discussed um that there, we could have discussed three or four players in this Valerenga side um you know Osam Sarawi is yeah. probably one that I think we both probably looked at it for this podcast and went no he's, he's too big he's too much <laughs> of a he's too much of a name uh in Scandinavian football at the moment but um he he would have been another great one to discuss and and another one who potentially you know would be leaving in the summer um and and Obviously, that is that's a that's a bargaining chip that the Valarenga will have, um, for these these types of players mid season, um, because you know you're you're taking a, a player away from a team in the in the midst of a you know likely a title run or or, or a push for a push for Europe, and um, it's yeah it, it's um it, it's one of those things where you probably you'd be you'd be inclined to say oh, well you know what we want X amount of money extra because. You know, we're going to have to try and find a replacement very, yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on on Butchrevnik, um, I, I can't say that I've, I've seen any any of him. Um, but from from your description of him, he definitely sounds like an interesting player. Yeah, I think so. I think it's interesting to note as well that he signed a contract extension last year in August, so his contract doesn't expire to twenty twenty three. And I think that in itself is quite often a sign for a young player when he signs a contract extension that's multi-year in that way. It's a sign that the club are trying to protect his value a little bit. So when, mm. I, again, I don't doubt that he's going to leave Valagrena. There's, there's no way that he will stay at Valarenga. He's yet to make his national team debut for Norway, but I don't think it can be far away. I, I, I confess I haven't actually asked the, the Oracle Norwegian football, Ben Wells, who, who is somebody who, who I would kind of bow down to in terms of his knowledge compared to mine of Norwegian football but I would think that players in front of him there can't be many more of that quality um, so yeah I think you're absolutely right that it will be become a hard thing for Valarenga to to then be able to replace Borchgrevnik if he does leave but that's something that they do they, they're a selling and development club so uh, they will have options and profiles in their youth teams that they will look to, to bring through and that's part of the great thing in Scandinavian football that Yes, you get players. We've already talked about the clubs that are recruiting very interesting players and in, like of Amu and Traore. And then you have the talent developers like Norgeland and, and like Valerenga, clubs who develop their own players and they get a chance at first team level. And that's something that's really important for young players.